Hi, and welcome to Our Gamified World. I'm Danielle Teichne. And I'm Adam Brown. And on the show this week, we'll be talking about a language and learning app called Duolingo. Absolutely. And we've already talked about this in one setting because I organised a field trip for my students to the Jewish Holocaust Centre. It was about three months ago. And Danielle came along to make a guest appearance. And we got up on stage and we had a chat about various gamified apps. And Duolingo is one of them. Here's how it went. I want to ask you about Duolingo. I learned, started to learn some German years ago, didn't get very far, I had this in my car and you know, um, when I was pulled up at traffic lights and I had the window down, I'm sure some people thought I was strange for saying, <laughs> you know, I'm gerade aus, gerade aus and just kept, you know, uh, yelling at my speakers. It's a really hard way to learn a language. Um, what's Duolingo? I, I downloaded it and I wasn't learning German anymore, but I could tell that it was better than this. Yeah. It probably would be 10 times better than that. The so Duolingo is uh, an app-based language learning educational application um, that actually I think it offers about 12 languages now and I think there's like another seven languages being, being developed for this program. Um, it works, it's gamified and it works by um, you do these language learning activities whether it's like a fill in the blank, repeat the words, or um, what else do they do? Um, just like matching up words with pictures, things like that. So activities, the more activities you do, you get XP points to your profile. And then uh, if you reach a certain um, XP points, then you get a badge to represent like a topic that you've covered, whether that be like food or, or drinks or something like that. And it just builds up in the amount of complexity as you go along. The really great thing about Duolingo is over time these badges start to lose their strength. So you have to revisit old old activities in order to keep strengthening up the level of these badges, which is really great. And I think it work, it has this some crazy algorithm which calculates how much time's gone by between you looking at this activity and and how often you're looking at it and works out the strength on the badge, which I think that's that's a fantastically new idea in gamification and in online learning. It's something that you don't see in our education, which is disappointing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it makes you feel guilty because I was getting reminders at 10.30 at night all the time, you haven't visited Duolingo, and I'm like, go away. It was my relationship with my phone was being tested. Very well, they always send you like a little crying owl, and he's like, please, no, why? <laughs> I miss you. I don't like owls, I get a dog. But is anyone here, is anyone here learning a language at the moment or wanting to do that? Does that appeal to anyone? So the good thing about Duolingo is it's not just an individual personal learning track. There are collaborative tools built into the application. Mm. And you talked about that on the day. Yeah, that's that's yeah. another fantastic thing. It's funded by Google. And I think the main benefit that Google get out of it is there's this great collaborative activity that you can do which translates the internet into every language they offer. So you can work on documents and translate these documents into the language that you're learning and then people review that and say, okay, this is an acceptable level of translation and then you get points from that as well. And the more points you get, you can put little costumes on your character. <laughs> <laughs> and I find that really addictive. I'm just like, I want to get the top hat for the owl, please. <laughs> One thing that you didn't talk about at that field trip was the use of leaderboards as part of Duolingo. Can you maybe elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's another sort of competitive, collaborative tool built into the application. Leaderboards, tracking your daily points. In fact, the other day I was getting some email updates from my friend's progress and how well he was doing, which reminded me that I'd sort of lost track <laughs> with Duolingo. But isn't that great how there's that competitive nature built in as well? Yeah, exactly right. And I think a great way to round out this episode is to go back to our live audience. And you've got a fantastic question that um, showed an interest in the, the disappearing nature of those badges mm -hmm. over time, how some of the badges disappear. And, and I really liked uh, your response to that. So let's have another look. With the whole kind of thing about your badges disappearing over time, in a sense, do you think that might be kind of demotivating to people at all? I think a little bit, but seeing yourself progress through the badges and um, over time, and you actually get rewarded if you 
go, go on like a five day streak, they send you more extra unlockable badges and you're just like, more, more, it's, it's addictive for me. I don't know whether it's my personality, but yeah, like, um, like anything, like there's always that period of time where it's like the novelty of it all. And then, yeah, it kind of wears off, to, wears off after a little while, but I don't know, it's a good reminder to show you, well, you're not as good as you think you are. So keep practicing. One good thing to note about Duolingo is that it's being used in classrooms across the US currently. And so students are being able to track their learning progress. But one thing that is missing from Duolingo is conversational type interactions with one-on-one -on -one with people. This is something that you, you need to go out and experience in the real world, I think. Mm. Um, maybe down the track, Google's going to implement some sort of hangout type function where you could talk to somebody across the globe who is fluent in that language. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that needs to be mm. included. And I guess that using it as a, a complementary element of learning in a classroom setting would be quite useful because quite often, especially in the areas of language learning, you've got students who aren't as keen as some students. They've yeah. got the really motivated students. There might only be one or two who really want to get fluent, you know, uh, deeply passionate about it. And maybe an app gives them an outlet to explore more than reading more pages mm -hmm. in that textbook mm -hmm. and going to the next activity, you know, that's going to be done the week after. Maybe using the app to level up and get experience faster. Maybe that's a, a nice way for student learning to be more personalised. It's funny that you say that. Um, there is another app that is coming out soon on um, Samsung VR called House of Language, in which um, you wear the headset and you uh, identify objects in a, in a setting. So for instance, it might say um, chair in a different language, and you might look to the chair in the setting. And if you look at it long enough, it'll do a little tick and be like, Doo -doo -doo. Wow. <laughs> and so it's it's a totally different approach to language learning. But it seems like if you want to learn a language, uh, incorporating a plethora of activities and methods it seems to be the most successful way to go about it. Mm. Yeah. And certainly Duolingo shows that because you're never just doing the same thing again and again and mm. again. You're, you've got the visual type of stuff, you've got the, the, the more verbal perhaps. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's lots of different variety and I guess that's the, the, the nature of the beast in, in any form of ongoing engagement and gamification. Absolutely. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time for a look at Habitica. Please subscribe below and feel free to leave us a comment or a question. Bye for now.